Today, I want to talk to you about what you need to know if you are planning on building multiple apps. So most of our own clients are focusing on building one app right now, but a lot of them have plans to build another app or even multiple apps uh, down the road. Right, they have that entrepreneurial mindset and they see this as a way for themselves to be able to create new businesses. And you might be in the same position. And in fact, I know that uh, a lot of you are because uh, the other day, last week, we came into the Facebook group and did a poll with all of you and asked that. And almost every single one of you who responded to that said that you were wanting to, uh, if not definitely build multiple apps, at least were planning on building another app down the road at some point. So, um, you know, with our own clients, this is one of the big things we focus on because not only do we want them to be able to be self-reliant so they can build that first app and then manage it long term, but also so that they can have the skills required to then turn around and build multiple apps, even if those apps are in or for different niches, uh, different use cases, right? Because there's a difference between uh, being able to build one specific app and being able to build multiple or many apps. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. And if you're new around here, my name is Kristen and I'm the co-founder of Coaching No Code Apps. We help business owners and industry experts build custom apps to start their app-based businesses or grow their existing businesses all without coding. So let's jump in. After working with many of these types of entrepreneurs wanting to build multiple apps, we've kind of narrowed down the top five areas or skills you need to focus on building and fine tuning in order to be able to build multiple apps for yourself. So let's go through them. Number one, you have to be able to think like a developer. So most of you are coming into this without a traditional tech background. And when a lot of entrepreneurs step into this world or this space of no code apps, they only focus on learning how to use a no code tool like Bubble to create really specific functionality for their one specific app. But what they find is when they try to you know, expand beyond that to different apps, they don't have a development mindset, so to speak. So, you know, you have to know when to even build certain features, right? You have to be able to create a strategic development roadmap that guides you through the process. And you have to know how to properly execute on that roadmap so that you can get the results you're after. Um, you have to know how to move through your development without having to constantly backtrack. And so much of this relates to skills you need to develop outside of just being able to use a specific tool because, you know, with a development mindset, you can come in and, and create a plan and create a strategy for any type of app no matter what specific functionality it is. So if you found that you're only focusing on knowing how to use a specific tool, for example, you need to think outside of that box and start developing a skill set around the strategy required to build an app, right? What does the process look like? Uh, what does the feedback you need to get look like? When do you stop to get that feedback? What phases do you need to go through, right? Those are things you need to stop and think more about. Okay, so number two, you need to know how to properly structure a database. Now, this is an area where a lot of people get stuck in, especially if you're coming into this space, never having worked uh, with spreadsheets before or with other types of databases before. This can be a bit of an eye-opener when you first come in 
because it can almost feel like a foreign language sometimes, right? Even though we are visually programming, um, there's still a lot to learn when you're creating a really unique and, and complex and customized database for your app. And, you know, when it comes to building multiple apps, a lot of people come in and they learn or they build their app based on other apps. So maybe they take a template and they tweak a template a little bit, or maybe they take a template and they start cloning it, or maybe they go through lessons on how to clone really specific apps. And so maybe they create their database for their immediate app that they're building and maybe they create one that that works and that is structured correctly but they don't have the fundamentals down they don't actually understand why things are created the way they are and so when they go and try to create another database for example or even when they try to expand that existing database they're kind of left in the dark they don't know how to add to it or how to replicate the initial things they did for other use cases. And so, you know, with our own clients, the, the database is something, it's one of the first things that we spend a significant amount of time around because it really does form the foundation of your app. It's what everything else builds off of. And if your app has uh, poor performance or or optimization issues, this is one of the first places we look. And you, you know, you don't want to get um, far too far along with your development and realize that your database was structured incorrectly. And that's certainly the case when you're building multiple apps as well. So you know, we, we can't go into how to properly structure a database in one video. Like I said, this is something that we spend a significant amount of time on with our own clients, but it is something that you need to know that if you're building multiple apps, you have to create a foundation uh, around this area. You have to understand the, fun the fundamentals of data structure, of building a database. And once you can do that, then you can start replicating that for multiple apps and you can start expanding your first app, your initial app, okay? So number three, you have to know how to correctly create the front end of your application. So one of the things, one of those fundamental concepts we really focus on is creating an app with the goal of usability. So there's a big difference between usability design and aesthetic design. Now, most people focus on aesthetic design, making the app look really fancy, right? Working with uh, fancy graphics or, or images and color palettes and logos and so on. But taking a step back and, and looking at the root of design, you have to design the front end of your app for usability. In other words, users have to be able to come into the app and navigate the entire thing, uh, work through all the processes, all the features, the functionality, without getting stuck along the way. And this is a lot easier said than done. You know, there's a, a book called Don't Make Me Think, which uh, lays a lot of the groundwork of usability design. And again, this is something that we really focus on because you know, you can have the fanciest looking app in the world, but if that usability design, that fundamental design component isn't in place, then none of the other stuff matters. And so when it comes to creating an app and then creating multiple apps, you have to understand these fundamentals around design. And a lot of people feel so stuck when it comes to design because we're not, most of us at least, aren't designers. And learning design skills is a long process, but learning how to make an app usable and using design skills and focusing them specifically on that is different. And that's something that you can do and something that will serve you well in the long run. So focus on making your app usable. Make sure users can navigate the app and focus uh, your 
design around that. And this also goes into structuring your app uh, with a single or multi-page structure, knowing which option is best for you. And again, we have videos on that, so we won't go into it here, but that's also something you need to focus on because if you're building multiple apps, they might not all have that same structure. So you have to understand when to use which one. So this is an area you're gonna really want to focus on. All right, number four, you have to create a foundation for yourself around, around building the logic into your app. And I'm talking about the workflows. Uh, what actually makes your app work, right? We talked about the database, the, the back end. We talked about the front end, the usability design. Well, this is the part that kind of connects everything and, and makes it all work. And we can go back to that example of using templates or cloning apps, right? A lot of people come in and, and they just want to get their app up and running as quickly as possible, which is totally understandable. And in, in doing so, they use templates or they use uh, videos that help them clone a specific type of app. And they copy what someone else has done and put it into their own app. And this is a really common approach, right? Because you're stepping into this space, it's all new, and, and that's kind of an easy way to get up and running quickly. But when you go to start expanding and customizing your app, and you can't find a template that offers the exact niche functionality you're looking for, you can't find a clone, or you can just copy this over into your app, you're gonna be stuck. And then when you go to create multiple apps, it can feel like you are completely in the dark when you can't find something to copy that's specific to your one use case. So if you can start building a foundational set of skills for yourself around creating the logic of your app, around using workflows, this is gonna serve you so incredibly well uh, in the long run. So again, it, it involves so much more than we can cover in a single video, but this is one of those areas that you're, you're really going to want to focus on. So if you've been finding yourself uh, just using templates, just cloning functionality, try to expand outside of that box. Try to learn the why and the how behind these, um, these workflows that you're seeing versus just copying them over specifically. Okay, and number five, the last one, and, and there are more than this, but the last main one is knowing how to test your app properly. So a lot of entrepreneurs who make it through these initial stages and they build that core functionality of their apps, it kind of feels like they've hit the finish line. But then when they go to start using their app, they realize that a lot of things are broken. There are a lot of issues. And while this is normal, when you are expecting to be at the finish line, it can feel really defeating. I mean, imagine running a, a five mile race only to realize that there has been, you know, another mile or two added on at the end and you've gone full out for those first five miles, right? You can feel like, oh man, there's, there's just so much more than I thought was involved. And so part of this is just going to be you um, setting the right expectations for yourself, knowing what's coming, knowing what to anticipate when it comes to testing, because this is an area that's often just really overlooked because it's natural to focus on building everything and not really on the testing components, right? But it's something that, especially if you're building multiple apps or if you're planning to grow and expand your first app, you need to understand the testing process. And like everything else, there's a lot that goes into testing, but understand that it can be a tedious process. You know, one of the, uh, the things that we focus on with our clients is helping them understand what we call the ripple effect. Now, the, the ripple effect is essentially when, you know, you have this app with a number of different features and lots of different functionality and everything is kind of interconnected. So when you find an issue somewhere and you go to fix it, chances are there's going to be a ripple effect throughout your app. And that one change, while it might have fixed the, the most immediate pressing issue, it could ripple out and cause little issues in other areas that might even be unrelated, right, to that first issue, just because everything is kind of intertwined. 
And so when you think everything is fixed and then you go back in and you realize that something else that, that was working previously now isn't working, it can get frustrating. So you have to understand going into it. Um, you know, there's a process that you need to go to in order to adequately test your app. You need to know to anticipate things like this popping up. Uh, you need to understand that this is part of the development process, right? Just building the app is, is not all there is to it. You have to make sure you're testing it properly and you are implementing the correct fixes and so on. So start to build your skill set around that testing process. Start to integrate it into the development process in the app you're building now and in any you build moving forward because it's going to make bringing users on board in the future so incredibly much easier. It's going to make those testing phases where you're getting their feedback a lot easier too because you can focus less on getting feedback on bugs in the app and more so on the overall functionality required. So let's, let's recap here. Number one, you need to be able to think like a developer, right? So start learning more of the strategy involved in building an app because there's so much more that goes into it outside of just knowing how to use a tool or, or learn how to build one specific piece of functionality, for example. And number two, know how to properly structure a database. This is one of the biggest areas you're going to want to create that foundational knowledge around. Number three, make sure you understand how to create the proper front end of your app. We're talking about usability design here. Make sure it is designed to guide users through your app, through the processes, through the features, because they're going to come into it and they're not going to know what to do unless you show them. And, and a lot of your design, that fundamental design, really needs to focus around that. Number four, understand the fundamentals around creating the logic of your app, around those workflows. Make sure you're not just going off of cloning existing apps or using templates, because once you go to replicate and create new functionality in other apps or expand your functionality in your existing app, you don't want to be left in the dark, right? You don't want to make a bunch of progress and then be totally stuck. And, you know, if, if you are cloning functionality, and, and this brings us to our, our last point of knowing how to test your app, if you're cloning functionality and, and something is off, when you go to test and pinpoint uh, those issues, they're going to be hard to fix if you don't understand why things were built the way they were in the first place. So again, leading back to our last point, understand how to test your app as well. Make this a part of your development process. And the more you can perfect your testing process, the easier it's going to be for you to launch your first app and definitely launch your, your next app and any other app you choose to build. So again, we have of course, lots of resources that dive into these uh, specific areas a lot more in depth, but these are the main things that I want you to focus on if you have plans to build multiple apps. These are going to be uh, key fundamentals for you to grow and develop as you move forward. And of course, if you want our help, if you'd like to talk about working one on one with us to build these skill sets, to build your initial MVP, your minimum viable product, and set yourself up to be self reliant in the long run, uh, you can send me uh, a personal message here in the Facebook group, or you can head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash apply, and you can schedule a free strategy call, send over some details about what you're trying to build, and we can talk about uh, if and how we can help you move forward with that. All right, I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching, and we'll talk soon.